Good day, I'm Samantha Allen and this is your GIS News for June 1. Government and unions have signed off on a heads of agreement that will see some groups of public sector workers getting a number of benefits in lieu of a salary increase for the 2010-2012 contract period. At Thursday's signing, Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller thanked public sector workers for their understanding in the face of difficult economic conditions. She acknowledged that the agreement holds the government to a program of low redundancies for the civil service and said all parties would be working out the mechanisms for social and economic benefits. Benefits. The government commits to making the position of district constables pensionable. The agreement binds the government to the refurbishing and equipping of the gym at the Jamaica Police Academy and the provision of gym facility at Mobile Reserve. Among other things, including housing solutions for public sector workers, in the meantime, negotiations for the contract period beginning April 2012 have started. The Planning Institute of Jamaica has praised the government for the increased emphasis on programs that address the major impediments to growth and social protection in the 2012-2013 budget. The PIOJ points to a 31% increase in the allocations for growth, competitiveness, social protection and climate change projects relative to the 2011-2012 financial year. We highlight these things because you know it has been a year and a half now that the Planning Institute and its growth inducement strategy have been systematically targeting and, and calling for expenditures to go towards this modernization of the economy and therefore we are now noting that the budget has in fact done so. Dr. Hutchinson was speaking earlier this week as the PIOJ reviewed Jamaica's economic performance in the first three months of the year. From January to March, the country registered a real growth of 0.6%. Natural fiber from a local plant source is being looked at as a means to boost rural economies. Industry Investment and Commerce Minister Anthony Hilton says development in this area will afford persons another means for gainful employment. He says growing the natural fiber industry will extend the value chain for local producers, both for local and export markets. As we move to attract new investments into the domestic economy, this industry can create a channel for new investment opportunities that can be on a wide spectrum um, sizes. He was speaking at the May 29 opening of a Caribbean Natural Fiber Symposium held at the Jamaica Business Development Corporation's Incubator and Resource Center in Kingston. 50 early childhood schools across the island will be getting $50,000 each for infrastructural development and other necessities. The money, totaling $2.5 million, is being donated by the Church's Cooperative Credit Union in celebration of Jamaica's 50th year of independence. The funds will help to purchase equipment and other teaching aids at the schools. Education Minister Reverend Ronald Thwaites has lauded the organization, saying the move is in line with the government's thrust to develop the early childhood sector. And if we emphasize and do right the early childhood sector, then much of the limited and mediocre outcomes at other levels of the education system will be taken care of. Four beacons will be lit and placed at central points across the island next Monday, June 4, as Jamaica continues to celebrate the Diamond Jubilee of Her Majesty the Queen. These beacons will be placed at the St. William Grant Park, Montego Bay Civic Center, Civil Park and Folly Oval, reflecting similar activities across the United Kingdom on Monday. The Governor General's office is chairing a small working committee to organize Jamaica's celebration of the Diamond Jubilee. Other activities include a church service planned for later this month and the issuance of Diamond Jubilee medals to members of the emergency services. And finally, the 2012 Atlantic hurricane season is now underway. To kickstart the June 1 to November 30 period of heightened storm forecasts, June is being observed as National Disaster Preparedness Month under the theme Embrace Climate Change Realities build disaster resilient communities. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management has planned a number of events to increase awareness to the importance of reducing the risk to the hazards that regularly affect the country. Activities to commemorate the month will include essay and poster competitions, a disaster preparedness and information fair to be held at Portmore Heart Academy, and a display and forum on disaster preparedness at the Hanover Parish Library. 
The 2012 hurricane season is projected to be less active with fewer major storms than last year. And that's it for JIS News today. I'm Samantha Allen. Thanks for watching.